going to talk about the domain and the range of functions in a little more detail than we've seen so far. Now, the domain and the range, when we're talking about that, you need to remember what those mean. The domain, we typically call those the x values of a function. We also call those independent values. The range, we typically use y, but those are the dependent functions. Now, when you're dealing with domain and range of functions, you've got a couple of different options. Now, the first type of uh, option for your domain and your range is you have what's called an open set. This means that if I'm looking at kind of a graph of an open set on a number line, I have a very distinct endpoint. I always think of this kind of like a wall that is like a chain link fence. You can't really stand on it. You're going to hurt yourself. You can just get right up to it. Now, the next kind of range and domain we have would be kind of a closed set, which means not only can I get up to the wall, but I can stand on the wall, just like a, some type of brick wall. Now, when you're dealing with domain and range, there's a couple of ways that you can communicate to people looking at your problem as to what the domain and range are actually going to be. Now, we're pretty familiar with the inequalities. If I have some type of open set, I'm going to use a less than or a greater than symbol. Now, if you have a closed set of answers, that's where we use the less than or equal to or greater than or equal to. So the line underneath all of your symbols is going to tell you that you've got your closed set. Now, interval notation, not all of us might be as familiar with. The way we use interval notation is using parentheses and brackets. You're going to use the parentheses for an open set of numbers and then you're going to use brackets for a closed set and whenever you're looking at that this is just like you would in the English language these two symbols are going to be for your smallest number and they're going to go first and the last two brackets and parentheses this are going to be for your biggest number and it'll come last now, the next thing we're going to talk about in this video is when our functions are increasing and decreasing. I'm going to flip over to the next page to talk about that. There we go. Now, you're increasing. What the increasing is, is these, I want to know what the x values are when y gets bigger. Or when y goes up. Now, the word increase tells you you're talking about y. And my students sometimes get confused as to whether they're talking about the x numbers or the y numbers. When I ask for an increase, I want you to tell me x. Now, the same thing goes for the decrease. This is going to be all the x values when y goes down. And it's very important you remember, I'm asking for what x numbers. I already know that the function's going down in some type of way. Now let's go ahead and take a look at an example. And we have any kind of function, doesn't really matter. If Let's go ahead and take a look at this one. This is an absolute value function. Now when you're looking at this absolute value function, you've got, I did this in two different colors so that you could see what was going on. Now in this pink section, we're going a different direction than the yellow section. Now if you were something that was standing right at this vertex and you wanted to go to the yellow, are you going up or are you going down as you move from left to right? Well this is where you're going down, so you're going to have an increase I'm sorry, that's where you go up. This is where you're increasing your x values. The other side is what confuses most of my students. In order to draw this, you noted, noticed I had an arrow moving up. But in the number line, that's not really what I'm doing. I'm going to start over here on the left. And when I move to a bigger x value from the left to the right, I actually go down in y values. So if I'm moving from left to right, this would be a decrease.
Now let's go ahead and take a look at a, an exact example and we'll find all of the things that I'm asking for. Now in order to do that, we're going to need to talk about what graphs are saying and I find that my friend Pierre can always help me. Now, Pierre is a graph crawling ant. And those of you that are giggling, I met Pierre in one of my calculus classes years and years and years ago. And he showed up in all sorts of videos that I've seen on YouTube. Now, the reason Pierre hangs out is because he's a graph crawling ant. These functions tell Pierre where he's allowed to crawl. And I find it helps us if we can just remember that the domain and the range are just directions for what Pierre is allowed to do. Now, if I'm talking about the domain and the range of this function, let's go ahead and start with him sitting at the vertex. Now, as x gets bigger, he can go forever and ever and ever in the x direction. I don't care how tall he is. I just want to know how far sideways he can, he can get. Now, he's going to think he can fly in just a second. All we have to do is say, hey, he can go forever in the positive x's. Now the same thing's going to happen. I don't care how tall he is, he can go forever in the x direction. So if I'm talking about the domain, basically Pierre can go anywhere he wants. So we're going to say, hey, dude, go to all real numbers, which is what this symbol means. Now if I actually wanted to use the less than or greater than, we could use what's called a compound inequality. And basically we have the smallest number, which is negative infinity, and then x and then the biggest number, which is positive infinity. Now, this is basically a statement that says x can be anywhere between these two numbers. Now, in interval notation, you're going to do the same thing. If we can have x between negative infinity and positive infinity. Now, I hope you noticed I used just the less than's sign because you can never actually get to infinity. So it's technically an open set. So I would start here with negative infinity, and I do need a negative sign in there, so it's negative infinity. Now the biggest number I can get to is positive infinity, and then I would close the set. Now for my range, this time I don't care how far sideways Pierre is going. I just want to know how tall he can get. And in the positive direction, he can go up, 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 and he can fly as far as he wants to. So my range is going to be all real numbers again. Since these are the y values, we're going to do all real numbers. Ah, I forgot to do something. I forgot to check how low he could go. Now if we start to make Pierre move on this function, he has to stop at the vertex. Which means he does have a very definite wall that he has to stop at at the range. Now if you look at where he stopped, he had to stop here, where x was in, where y was a negative 4. So that means that y has to be greater than or equal to negative 4, because he is allowed to sit on the vertex where y is negative 4. Now, if you're talking about interval notation, you do have to have a big number and a small number. Now, the very smallest number he could get to was a negative 4, and he's allowed to be there, so I'm going to use a bracket for negative 4. Then the very biggest number, well, he's still going to be able to go all the way to infinity, and that's always going to be an open bracket. So there's your range. Now the next part is going to be where Pierre is going to be increasing and decreasing with the function. Oh no, I erased Pierre. I didn't need to do that. There we go. Move out of the way. Now, increasing and decreasing. It's important you remember what I'm after are the x values, these pink values. I already know that the range is going up or the range is going down. Now if you start to the left, on the left, and you're going to move to the right, Pierre would have to start way up here at the top of this slide, and he would end up sliding down until he gets to the vertex. Now one way I do like to help my students with this is if we're talking about the small x numbers, all these negative x numbers. Pierre is actually decreasing. So he's going to decrease right up until he gets to that point on the vertex. 
Now in order to understand what we're going to do there, we do need to know what point that is, and that's going to be at a negative 3, negative 4. Now your negative 3 is your x number, so he's going to decrease any time x is going to be smaller than negative 3. So we have x is smaller than or equal to negative 3, because those are all the x numbers, the negative numbers, that I decrease. Now once he hits that vertex, he's going to start to increase again, because he's got to climb up the mountain. I'm having technical issues. He's going to climb up the mountain right here. And what that means is as the x gets bigger and bigger, I start increasing in my function. So when I'm going to write my increase, he's going to increase when x is greater than or equal to a negative 3. And take a look at that for a minute if you need to pause the video. Now, when we're writing that in interval notation, my increase I'm just going to have a big number and a small number. The smallest number that I could get to is a negative 3, and the biggest number I can get to is an infinity, because I'm getting bigger in the right, on the right side. Now, for the decrease, the smallest number I can get to is a negative infinity, and the biggest number is a negative 3. Let's look at a second example. Now the first thing we're going to need to do is we're going to talk about the domain and the range. So let's get Pierre back in our graph. Now as Pierre goes from the left to the right, the very smallest x he could ever get to is going to be that negative 5. Now the domain is all the x values that he's allowed to be at. And remember we don't care how high or how low he is, I just want to know how far sideways he can go. Now, as he goes to the graph, something happens at that 3, 2. He's not allowed to be on where the place where x equals 3. So I think of that, that's our pothole. He kind of has to jump over it, and then he can keep going on his way through the function. When we go ahead and write the domain, I find that just kind of looking at this domain as a single inequality would help. I, you can pretend that you're kind of like a big tractor, and if you squish this function so it's only sitting on the x-axis, that's what the function would look like, only we would have that big old hole right here. So if you're going to write the inequality to this, x has to be bigger than that negative 5, so x is greater than or equal to negative 5 but you do have to tell everybody that x cannot be the number 3. Now when you're talking about the interval notation, because we have this break, we have to write two separate intervals. Now if you look at the first part of the domain, we have what's called a barbell. He can go from that, that positive 5, and then he can move right on to the 3, but then he has to jump over, so he has another set from 3 to infinity. So this is how we're going to write our interval notation. We have a closed spot at negative 5, and he can go all the way up to 3, which is an open bracket. But then we have another interval that opens at the other side of 3, kind of the other side of the wall, and then he can go to infinity. Now the range is going to work the same way, only we're going to care about how tall Pierre can go. Now the, various, the very highest place Pierre can be is going to be all the way up here at 6. Ugh, Pierre try, is trying to split apart on me. Now he can go as high as 6. Now when he's on the function, even though that middle section he goes back up again, um, we don't care. The very highest number he gets is at 6. The very slowest number is he can keep going forever and ever and ever in the negative y direction. Now, that hole that's sitting here at 3, 2. If I'm looking at the y's, even though he can't be where y is 2 on this spot, Pierre can stand where y is 2 over here and still be on, this, on the function. 
If you remember, functions only say that I have to have one x. So this does not have a break in the range. So my range is basically going to say that y has to be smaller than or equal to 6. And it's OK if y is going to be 2, because he can just stand over here. Now when you're talking about your interval notation, let's go ahead and Oh, that's a terrible line. But that's what our inequality would look like for our range, is going down here in our interval notation, the very smallest number I can get to is at a positive 6, and then I can go to negative infinity forever and ever. Now, the increase and the decrease. Let's go ahead and talk about those two. Now, when Pierre starts at the very left side of the function, he's here, and he starts to decrease. Now, I know he's going from high to low. The increase is not talking about the y numbers. It is just talking about the x's. So when the function is from here to here, I'm going to go ahead and decrease. Pierre is sliding down the page. Now, once I reach that yellow point, Pierre starts to go up the page. So from that point here, which he's allowed to stand on, all the way to this open interval here, because he, he has to skip that point, he's going to increase, because he's going up the page. Then once he gets to that top point, he can start going down the page again, and he'll go down for infinity. So he ends up going down as all of the x's get bigger. So let's go ahead and write that in the proper notation now. That's going to be where he's decreasing. So in, in, in inequality notation, Pierre increases between an x of negative 3 and an x of positive 3. So we're going to have a compound inequality where negative 3 is less than or equal to x, which is less than a 3. Interval notation, same thing. I have a closed bracket, negative 3, to a positive bracket, or parenthesis, positive 3. Now, when he's decreasing, he's decreasing in two separate places. So we're going to go ahead and write the first place. Is he's going to decrease when x is negative 5 and x is negative 3. So he has to be between the negative 5, it's less than or equal to, x, because I'm just talking about the x values, this is also a less than or equal to, and it could be a negative 3. Now let's go ahead and talk about the other place that he decreases. He has to start decreasing where x is a positive 3. Okay. Then we have another one where we have an open bracket 3 to infinity. Now, I know when you start throwing in inequality and interval notation, and especially the decreasing and the increasing of functions, you just have to be careful. You might make some mistakes, just like I did. Go back and take a look at what you're doing and make sure that everything turns out the way you need to.